represents who we are as a nation. Mayor Romero, thank you for everything you are and everything you do. It's so good to be back in Arizona. You guys are gonna make the difference. You will elect the next president and vice president of the United States.
people would lie to by the President of the United States. And let's be clear about something. The President of the United States is also the Commander-in-Chief, who has them as his highest responsibility to concern himself with the health and safety of the American people. And on that count, Donald Trump failed. Yeah. He failed us. Because you see, on the one hand, you have a Joe Biden who is saying that we know access to health care should be a right and not just a privilege of those who can afford it. Joe Biden, who together with President Obama was responsible for creating the Affordable Care Act that brought health care to over 20 million people who didn't have it, who said we will protect people with pre existing conditions. Taxes 
is for middle class working people. We will make sure that no working family pays more than 7% of their income in child care.
the crises we are facing, and I don't have to tell Arizona this, includes a climate crisis. The West Coast has been burning these wildfires. You know, I've, I've gone back, as you know, I'm from California. I've gone back. I have visited with families that have been evacuated, with firefighters who are fighting fires while their own homes are burning. My brother-in-law is a firefighter. I have seen the damage and destruction, the damage and destruction in our Gulf Coast states because of the storms that have wiped out entire communities in the Midwest. Farmers have lost whole seasons of crops because of the floods. Joe Biden says, let's deal with this. Let's face fact, let's embrace science. Let us do it with a sense of urgency and also understand in his utter eloquence, says, science doesn't know. The president of the United States referred to science as a, as a person. <laughs> we need a president who embraces fact and speaks the truth to the American people and deals with what is one of the greatest threats to our institutions. So these are the threats. And these are the crises that we are dealing with right now. These are just some of them. And it brings me to what's happening right now across America, a process that will end in six days, and that's this election. And what we know is that everything, everything is in each of our hands in terms of the power we possess through our vote and our action to determine who will be the next president of the United States. And, you know, people ask, they say, well, you know, does it matter if I vote? What, why should I vote? And I'll tell you, Tucson, I, I, I mentioned three things in response to that question. One, it's important to vote, to honor the ancestors, all those people who fought, who marched for our right to vote. You know, we just this year lost the great John Lewis, a great American who shed his blood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, together with so many others. John Lewis was such a fighter for civil rights. He understood the ongoing fight for civil rights. Not only did he shed blood fighting for African Americans to vote in the South and around our country, it was John Lewis who was always at the front of the line saying, and the civil rights fight is a fight for marriage equality. The civil rights fight is a fight for immigrant rights. The civil rights fight is for equity and fairness. So it's about honoring the ancestors, those who sacrificed so much. It's honoring the ancestors, knowing that we this year celebrated the passage of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. Right? And honoring those suffragettes who in their white were marching and fighting and saying, we will not be deterred. We will not be silenced. So honoring the ancestors. Reason number two. 
everything is at stake. Yeah. Everything is at stake. You go down the list. Everything that impacts you and your family and your neighborhood and your community and our country. From health care to if we're going to support working families and working people, understanding that it is that kind of approach that has built the middle class of America and made us strong when we've been strong. Everything is at stake. Whether we are going to have a country that embraces the fact that we are a nation built in large part by immigrants, and we must create a pathway to citizenship and honor America's promise to our children. Whether we can embrace science and deal with this changing climate, whether we care about our standing in the world, and whether we understand that the Commander-in-Chief of the United States of America should never take the word of a foreign dictator over the word of the American intelligence community. So we vote to honor the ancestors. We vote because we know everything is at stake. So much is at stake. And then here's the third reason I think that it is important for folks to vote. And it is this. So I've been traveling all over. I've been in Florida and Michigan and Ohio and, and Georgia and North Carolina. I was in Nevada yesterday. I'm here in Arizona today. I'm going to head to Texas. Been all over. And here's the thing, you know, um, we have a long history of, of, of powerful folks trying to make it difficult for other folks to vote. And then in 2013, of course, the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act, and right after that, there were a couple dozen states that put in place laws that made it difficult, laws that were purging the voter rolls. And we have people in powerful positions now, including the President of the United States at that first debate who took the stage in front of 70 million Americans and openly encouraged suppression of the vote. People who are trying to make it confusing. You gotta fill out this envelope and put it in that envelope. Places where you gotta have them a perfect stranger sign or somebody else sign your envelope. Places in our country that are pulling away drop boxes to make it difficult or shutting down polling sites. We have to ask, why are so many powerful people trying to make it difficult for us to vote? Why are they trying to confuse us? Why is the president messing with the post office? And here's the answer. Because they know our power. They know our power. They know when we vote, things change. They know when we vote, we win. And so let's not ever let anyone take our power from us. Because here's the thing, our democracy is always going to be as strong as our willingness to fight for it. And so that is what we will do. And that means every one of us voting, talking to our friends, letting them know what's at stake. And then Tucson, my final point is this. This moment will pass. This moment will pass. And years from now, our children, our grandchildren, others, they will ask us, where were you at that moment? They'll look at us in our eyes. Where were you at that moment, they'll ask us. And what we will tell them is so much more than just how we felt. What we are going to tell them 
is what we did. Joe Biden, the next president of the United States. <laughs> 